Welcome to Fort Knox. I am John Fort, and I'm live with Josh Hoffman, uh, co-founder and CEO of Zymergen. Going public today, you're at the NASDAQ. Um, this is such a unique company. It's different from uh, the, the typical either tech or manufacturing company that I'm used to covering. But I, I'm fascinated by what you're developing. And um, we, can, we can even start in the realm of uh, electronics, which is one of your three core markets, to give people a sense of what this is. I mean, uh, do I pronounce it Highline? Highline, yeah. Highline Z2. Um, yeah, Highline, just Highline. Tell, yep. tell people what that is because I think that'll start to give potential investors and just uh, tech enthusiasts out there a sense for what your technology is capable of. Uh, great. So first, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's obviously a, a big day for the company. Um, I mean, look at Zymergen. <sighs> We're making better stuff in a better way. And as an example of that Hyaline product, uh, it's, a, it's an optical film. So it's a sort of clear film, very thin, uh, that you would use in the display stack, the stack of a, of a cell phone display or a tablet display or a laptop or TV. And what it allows manufacturers of those displays to do is simply make uh, better screens with higher performance and in a whole bunch of interesting form factors, so whether it's a foldable display or a lower power consumption display. And what we're really doing is kind of, we're able to, to partner with nature to bring, as I say, better products made in a better way to market. Uh, and we're excited about the kinds of products our customers in the electronic space are, are gonna, gonna bring to market with our product. And the, the partner with nature part is what is going to be exciting for people to get their heads wrapped around. Um, this is man this is manufacturing at the molecular level, right? This is manufacturing at the molecular level. I mean, look, um, humans have been, I, we, people I, I think don't always think about this, but humans have been cracking hydrocarbons, taking oil or gas, heating them up, breaking it to component uh, molecules, and then like molecular Legos, reassembling them to make all the stuff that, uh, that, that we touch and feel and use every day. Uh, and it's an incredible triumph of human ingenuity on the one hand, and on the other, uh, we've been using the same basic six or seven Lego blocks uh, for the last hundred years. Uh, innovation has slowed. You do anything for hundred years, you're, you're going to get good at it. And frankly, the manufacturing methods are are contributing to the existential problem of our time, which is climate change. Uh, and many of the products that are made have a whole series of uh, problematic end of life uh, implications. So whether you're talking about microplastics that are ending up in our waterways, whether you're talking about uh, runoff from nitrogen fertil fertilizers that are creating dead zones in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, whether you're talking about the endocrine disruptors that people have talked about creating a global fertility crisis. And so our ability to kind of tap into you know, billions of years of evolution and make uh, 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 better products, right, products that perform better, products that have features and functions that existing products don't have and to stain 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 sustainable way point of 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 technology right to to support human progress and we're excited about the potential for our technology explain how the algorithms that you work with work together with the biology for you to find the solutions to customer problems and kind of what the what the challenge is there uh, in scaling. So a, a bit of your secret sauce and how the uh, machine learning AI piece partners together with the biology. Yeah, so um, people have been dreaming about using biology for broad-based industrial purposes for a long time. Amgen, uh, the first cover, the, f the first thing they did of real technical notice, my understanding, they were on the cover of Science Magazine for, uh, for creating the E. coli uh, bacteria that could make indigo dye. But, uh, so the power, the power is easy to understand, right? The imagined world. The problem is that the biology is mystery, right? As one of my co-founders likes to say, what we don't know about biology vastly exceeds what we do know. Even the best studied organisms, we only know a fract what a fraction of the genes do. And so if you actually want to be able to uh, take this amazing idea and make it a commercial reality, you gotta hit your cost targets, you gotta hit your scale-up plans, right? You gotta manufacture, we're a, we're a business. And what we've built is a set of machine learning algorithms that in part allow us to uh, find and identify uh, those 
those genes, those genetic changes that allow us to make these engineered cells to, to have them replace with economics that work, you know, hundreds of, of millions of pounds of steel and concrete and high pressure reactors that is the, the standard chemical manufacturing process, right? And so what we're doing is we're, we're taking advantage of huge revolutions in sequencing and gene editing and cloud computing to allow us to reliably search and program the genomes of our, of our bacteria, these, these, these microscopic chemical factories in a way that allows us, frankly, to deliver our, deliver our product at pretty exciting costs. Um, let's get into your addressable market. Uh, you know, in the S1, you talk about uh, in a total addressable market in excess of a trillion dollars because you're, talk, you're talking about materials used for potentially anything. But the, the three markets that you're focused in on in the beginning, uh, the, um, the addressable market, I think, is around $150 billion. And so right now, we talked about Highline, but uh, you're also in uh, customer uh, consumer, consumer care. care. Yep. And, and you're, you've got this naturally derived insect protection that's expected to be available in a couple of years. Um, yep. What is that? How is that different from what's out there now? And um, and w what's the potential market impact that you see? Yeah, so, I, I mean, uh, the, the current market for insect repellent products, it, it creates a pretty unfortunate consumer choice. Uh, you can have something that's effective, but is unpleasant to use uh, and doesn't have great safety properties. Or you can use stuff that has got great safety properties and is pleasant to use, but probably isn't very effective. Um, and at a time, especially with climate change, where insect-borne illness is becoming more and more of a, of a real-life problem, right? Ask anybody who deals with Hey, welcome to A Conversation With. My name is Philip DeFranco, and today we are having a conversation with the fantastic Marisha Ray. Hello. Hello, Phil.